you left a comment here and I kind of sent you a message on Signal like about Debian. So Debian just released <laughs> version 12 and everyone's like going crazy about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that, that is what it seems like. Like if I open YouTube, if I open these forums that I follow, it's like these Linux creators are very excited about Debian. Um, Debian 12, they're like, it's the best release ever, right? Um, and it makes sense because finally, uh, apparently, I haven't used it yet, but this is what I've heard them say, it, it supports like modern hardware. You can use current video graphics drivers, for example, so it's great for gaming, stuff like that. And it's like, this is my frustration with um, Debian in general and these like stable uh, Linux distro releases. Um, it's that they're always great, like the month that they come out with a new release, right? <laughs> the issue <laughs> the issue isn't that they're always behind, it's that for the next two years from now, Debian 12 is going to be exactly the same as it is now, right? It's not going to be getting further updates and stuff like that. It's pretty much pinned all their software here to what is releasing now. Um, there could, there's going to be security patches, of course, and stuff like that, but no feature updates. And the problem with that on desktop Linux specifically is that desktop, like the desktop ecosystem is a moving target. If you're a desktop operating system, you can't afford to not change anything at all for two years in a row or four years in a row, because I don't know how long Debian is like officially supported, but I think the last version is supported as well. So you could potentially be going four years between releases and it, it, it becomes unworkable and it, it, and it happens every two years. It happens every time Debian is released, you know? People are very excited because they get the latest software and then they don't get any new updates for a very long time um, compared to rolling releases, which get like uh, updates immediately as the developer pushes them out. Um, I think that Debian has like, it has a space. I run servers on it, for example, um, some of them. And like, there's a reason that you might want um, to pin all of your software to a specific version for a long period of time, but you almost never want to do that on the desktop because the desktop ecosystem is always changing. Apps that you want to use, web browsers, they're always changing. And like even consumer hardware is always changing. It's always being updated. And when you're stuck with two-year-old software, it's simply not going to work anymore. So it's just the frustration I always have with <laughs> new releases of Debian. And we're seeing it again. It's, it's weird stuff to me. It's valid too. And you know, so I used to use Debian. That used to be my main Linux distro on my personal laptop. Um, and what actually prompted me to move away, from, I was already somewhat unhappy with it because I realized there was a lot of things that just stopped working after, like like you said, like a couple years of using Debian. I was like, okay, like I'm starting to stumble on issues now. Um, but the main thing that happened was I wanted to try to build Firefox from source. So this is when I was really, I never ended up like, actually doing this, but I started to really want to start contributing to open source software. And I really wanted to just like build something, see how it works and try just try to like mess with it and tinker with it. Um, it was kind of like my first entryway into trying to like just understand open source software. This was many years ago. And I couldn't build Firefox from source on Debian. Every time I tried to do it, it's like you're missing these 50 dependencies are out of date by this much. and. I'm not kidding, like I literally spent like two days going one by one. So I would update one, but in order to update one, there were six other ones that were out of date. So it was like this crazy tree of just like missing dependencies that were completely out of date. And I booted up a Fedora VM, it just worked. There was no, I think there was like two missing dependencies that just had to be installed. And then I was, I was clear. But with Debian, I literally couldn't actually, it started getting to a point where I'm like, screw this, this is ridiculous. And so, and that's that's the design usage for Debian. Like it's supposed to be locked in place. So this isn't necessarily a criticism of like, it's not a criticism of anything that's not supposed to be its design use case is what I'm saying. It's just, I, I find it weird like you that it would be like suggested as like a common desktop OS for the average person. I think it's a little, it's pretty extreme when you think about it. I don't know if this is a hot take or not. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that like a lot of um, maybe 
old school Linux desktop users are very out of touch with what people use their machines for. Um, and it might be just a matter of needs. Like if you only visit one website, maybe you only browse the old Reddit design in Firefox and you do nothing else with your computer. Do you really need Firefox to be updated? Maybe not, maybe that's fine. You can post to Reddit and Hacker News and whatever like text-based forms you want in this browser. But like realistically, there are so many things that people use um, their desktop for that are very like, they require modern software solutions and they require like maybe a lot of computational power. You can't do a lot of things on a 12 year old ThinkPad, right? And that's that power that people need, that flexibility that people need is just not there in stable desktop distros like Debian. And it's just very, it's crazy to me that people would recommend it. Like you should try this just to anybody without knowing like what they, what they want to do with their computer and just acting like Linux, Linux, and just acting like Debian is going to work perfectly for them out of the box when that is almost never going to be the case in my experience. Right. That was me. That, that was me. I um, was somewhat still new to Linux and Debian was the second Linux distro I ever tried after Ubuntu. And that's what right. I read online. It's like, oh, Ubuntu is based on Debian. So um, just use Debian instead. And I'm like, OK. As if they're like, <laughs> I really think <laughs> what? I really think that that's a huge reason why desktop Linux is, has taken so long to take off. I mean, desktop Linux has only seen mainstream usage in the last year or two, maybe. I mean, I would consider something like the Steam Deck coming out as like the biggest event in desktop Linux history, right? And that's based on, um, I want to say Arch, but maybe it's not. But it's something a lot more modern than Debian. It gets more frequent releases. And that's because it's really a necessity for, for like, mainstream users um, to not be on a, a stable release, right?